Hi guys welcome to my channel. I have created this video and I hope you guys enjoy the video. It's a story about what if Naruto learn how he receives the information of his bunshin early. Chapter 3. Shino found himself the first to arrive at the training ground for the morning test. He had planned to come early, not knowing what the day would hold, but thinking Shikamaru had most likely been correct. That thought in mind, he'd spent the entire morning after waking preparing special kikaichu. It wasn't a trick of their evolution, which would have been amazing, as much as he simply slowed their development after the larval stage. This caused them to be more sluggish, but have a lifespan of up to an entire day after emerging, instead of the more typical lifespan of only a few hours. Really, most of these bugs weren't going to be good for much but scattering, waiting, and then reporting back later in the day. Then again, that was all he needed them for. He turned his attention to the remaining eggs that were in production, no longer suppressing their growth. He'd need more alert Kikaichu to practice, and there was only one more probable site to leave Kikaichu to scan. If they were the last ones to take the test of some other sensei, then the bugs wouldn't have another team to watch. Naruto arrived next, nearly overshooting the training ground with an over-enthusiastic bound before abruptly collapsing to Shino's feet with a desperate gasp for breath. Missed, he wheezed, alarm, between pants, Hata, still trying to get enough air, run. Shino regarded his more energetic would-be teammate and adjusted his glasses. From his position on the ground, Naruto gave a sheepish chuckle, already mostly recovered. A minute after that, Kuranai strolled into the training ground from a break in the trees, Shino's Kikaichu hadn't spread out enough to catch her presence yet. Hmm, that balance of lifespan to energy might need some consideration. The Kunoichi held a large cloth-wrapped box underneath one arm. The orange-clad boy popped back to his feet, looking around curiously. Pointing at the bundle, he asked, what's that? This is something for later, Kuranai deferred, shaking her head and patting the box before setting it atop a training post. Oh, well, where's Shikamaru-kun? A stray Kikaichu released a pheromone chain that alerted Shino's internal Kikaichu. Here, he noted, pointing to a different break in the trees, as Shikamaru entered the training ground from the forest. Yo, he said with a wave, his other hand tucked into his pocket. Thought I'd come in from the family land, since we were out this way. Am I late? Kuranai shook her head, giving the three a friendly smile. You're all on time, and that's a great start. Okay, today, we're going to do a more in-depth consideration of your skills and skill range, like we had yesterday, but with some light combat exercises. Ready. Yeah, Naruto cheered eagerly, echoed by Shino's more reserved, yes, and Shikamaru's tolerant, why not? Not seeing any reason to hold back, Shino demonstrated the full range of his skills for Kuranai, as did Shikamaru and Naruto. Shino created a Kikaichu clone, which was able to escape Shikamaru's shadow bind. The shadow bind seemed to stop Naruto still, provided Shikamaru got Naruto, not a bunshin. And with enough bunshin, Naruto easily overwhelmed either of them. The shorter boy nodded eagerly over the praise Kuranai gave him, and her advice that finesse would carry him further than brute force. Not that different from what Shikamaru and Shino had deduced themselves. Interestingly, when Kuranai turned to address Shino and Shikamaru's own weak points, Naruto pulled a notebook from one pocket and began scribbling furiously. So far, his ability to articulate holes in Shino's own defense during practice was fairly poor, but he was more than willing to spare a bunchin or two to demonstrate it. Was he trying to learn how to express his critiques better? After Kuranai finished examining the genin, she explained that while she approved, they would have to satisfy all three teachers' requirements to pass. Her test ended up taking long enough that the three were treated to the sight of Sasuke staggering into the clearing, a gasping Sakura heaving behind him, and Ino stumbling from between the trees behind them to fall flat on her face with a moan. Our sensei, Sasuke announced, shooting a dark look across the other trio, is trying to kill us. He looked down at his own outfit, completely covered in mud, then glanced to Ino, no better off, and Sakura, absently pawing pine needles from her hair. We should be on our way to Asuma Sensei, then, Shikamaru noted, watching Naruto look at Sakura with obvious worry. Shino agreed, and then the three had to run one-third of the way around Konoha to their next meeting with a teacher. The next training ground was much like the last, and their first introduction to the large, reserved-looking man. Now that he was aware of it, Shino glanced at Asuma's sash, seeing the color and the symbol for, fire, on it. Asuma raised an eyebrow at the trio as they came to rest, Naruto recovering from the flat run most quickly. Welcome, he said, nodding at them. He finished the cigarette he was smoking and waved a hand, the brand inexplicably vanishing. Giving them all a discerning stare, he introduced himself, giving a short list of his own traits, as they had all practiced before. They returned their own introductions, unchanged except for the omission of Shino's ambition to someday join Anbu. That was something he trusted Naruto and Shikamaru with, he hadn't told Kuranai, and he doubted he would tell Kakashi, either. After hearing them out, he lectured them at length about the code of Konoha, especially the need to exemplify the virtues required for admission into the academy. Naruto looked bored to the point of frustration, but kept his complaints to an indistinct mutter while taking more notes. Asuma seemed slightly amused by the behavior, and otherwise didn't remark on it. 
After that was a much longer lecture about the will of fire. Asuma expertly snared Naruto's flagging concentration by pointing out that in Konoha's history, every Hokage to date had burned with the will of fire, as should any true ninja of the hidden village. Then came another surprisingly monotonous lecture about inner peace and meditation, followed by a slightly more uplifting explanation of how it would help them as ninja. Applications included resisting interrogation, with time. Shino could have his Kikaichu deaden his pain receptors, and if required kill him and devour his remains to prevent capture, an unfortunate disaster for any ninja who wanted to investigate that awakening from sleep at predetermined time Kikaichu could do that for him, increase awareness of the surroundings, Shino monitored his Kikaichu, continually reporting the various pheromone feeds from around him, relaying all the information that his scouts had gathered, and mental clarity. Shino found enough time during the extensive idle discussions to produce another generation of his longer-lived, slower Kikaichu and cover the area, though he suspected they would have nothing interesting to report. Very little of what Asuma said was new to Shino, but he listened with half an ear and nodded respectfully, amusing himself by inspecting individual Kikaichu and local insects for signs of mutation, or any advantageous evolutions. The genin were dismissed, and told to get some lunch before meeting with the last sensei for the day. Shikamaru's home was the designated fall-back position, so they retreated there for lunch, at the cost of another grocery shopping, mission. So, we know that bastard sensei's going to give us hell, Naruto said, once they'd made themselves comfortable, each seated atop a different training post while while eating. What are we going to do about it? Endure, Shino answered, Shikamaru grimaced, staring down at the tray on the ground, holding their empty bowls and chopsticks. Crossing his arms over his chest, he said, we can expect him to be mean, he's the, bad sensei, after all. Instead of giving anything away, let's just play dumb, see what his position is and what he does. Naruto gave a glum sigh, slumping slightly. I wanted to kick his ass, he grumbled. He will use that anger against you, Shino noted, adjusting his glasses slightly. I can see this being a real pain, Shikamaru grumbled, uncrossing his arms and lacing his fingers behind his head. It's probably a lesson about real ninja enduring, like Shino-kun thinks. I should try and keep my temper, then, Naruto said unhappily. But he's such a jerk. Then, try losing your temper anyway, Shino suggested. Naruto looked confused, glancing to Shikamaru to see if he thought it was a good idea. Maybe, Shikamaru allowed, we could try and be smart, get Naruto to henge some of his bunshin as us, but I expect he'd punish us for being too clever. Hmm. No, I don't really see a better solution than going in and seeing what he wants. I don't think I'll ever forgive that guy if he makes it so we can't qualify, the orange-clad boy grumbled. Back to the academy, I don't want that. Shino frowned, considering what Naruto said. Shikamaru made a thoughtful noise, then shook his head. Don't let it go to your head, but if they're doing all of this, I think they pretty much already have decided on us. Nodding at the boy who had made the logical leap first, Shino added, the question remains as to why they have decided not to tell us. Wait, they already want us? Naruto asked, surprised and confused. But yeah, why did they choose not to tell us? I'm not sure yet, the shadow user admitted, shaking his head. They would think it was a good reason, obviously, but I don't know everything they do, so who's to say? At this stage, we must gather more information before we can act, Shino noted, frowning thoughtfully behind the collar of his jacket. His Kikaichu would give some extra information, once he went to collect them after training was over, but he doubted they would learn much of use. I agree with Shikamaru-kun, we should not reveal our hand. Instead, we should enter the encounter and pretend we know nothing. Reveal our hand, Naruto asked worriedly, before shaking his head and scribbling in his notebook again. Alright, how do we do that? Easiest way, Shikamaru asked, raising his eyebrows. It'll hurt. I can do it, Naruto said stubbornly. I can take hits. Shino had a suspicion he wasn't going to like what was to come. But then, if he couldn't get used to taking a few hits himself every so often, he wasn't likely to last long as a ninja. He wondered if he'd spent too many Kikaichu already, realizing the new generation wouldn't be ready until after their next test had begun. Alright, then we walk into it thinking Kakashi's just a jerk, not some deranged genius with a plan to make us stronger in ways we won't understand at the time, Shikamaru decided. Go ahead, lose your temper. Make sure your taijutsu's really sloppy and out of control, so he thinks it's genuine. I predict he'll beat the crap out of us, like with Sasuke, and then give us some speech about how he's impressed with our drive, but we need a lot of work. Yeah, okay, I can do that, Naruto agreed. Hey, Shikamaru-kun, Shino-kun, give me the names of some good books to read about this stuff for my library bunshin. Alright, Shikamaru allowed, amused. Shino allowed a nod of his own, and the three began slowly walking towards their inevitable meeting with the, bastard, sensei. Shikamaru had one arm draped over Naruto's shoulder as they limped out of the training ground together. Slightly behind them, Shino had one arm over Naruto's shoulder as they likewise staggered back into town. Playing dumb hurt. Bastard sensei was an absolute monster. They didn't even make it into the clearing before Shino had turned to Shikamaru, starting to open his mouth in warning and explosive tags. A real ninja is always prepared for ambush. 
They regrouped, dazed and shaken, but only bruised. Shino's scout Kikaichu tried to find Kakashi, and were met with some wide area fire jutsu, which had made the bug user the first one to lose his temper, surprisingly. Shino's temper burned hot, and brief. After attempting taijutsu and getting two cross punches to the face, Shino had reluctantly started using his Kikaichu clones, and in response, Kakashi had started hitting harder, swiftly draining the Abarame boy's chakra reserves and Kikaichu. For his part, any number of Naruto's bunshin seemed to run at Kakashi from all directions, and all were swiftly dispersed. Shikamaru didn't have a ranged option, thanks to his allies, so tried his clan jutsu. That had been worthless. The second Shikamaru had felt Kakashi in his shadow's grasp, his dark chakra completely surrounding the ninja. Kakashi simply used Kawerimi to replace himself with Naruto. Infallibly, he would get the real Naruto, too, resulting in the shadow-bound boy getting beaten by at least a dozen of his clones before they realized their error. Shikamaru decided to just give up and sit down. Explosive tags. No breaks on the battlefield. He tried some taijutsu of his own, and got thrown into Naruto a few times, and bunch and dozens of others. For, not being able to take a hit, dispersing them through impact felt almost as painful as the real article, and Shikamaru had a good sample to form a scientific basis for that, now. So, for a while, Shikamaru had tried more desperate, wilder punches and kicks, hoping he could maybe. Explosive tags. Sloppy work creates more openings. Shino went down first, collapsing to slide on the dirt face first, his glasses tumbling off. Shikamaru felt a real spark of fury then, so he tried to play even dumber, going for his kanai and using Naruto's bunshin as cover to quick stab at Kakashi's weak point. Kakashi was mean. No explosive tags, this time. Instead every would-be lethal strike was instantly met with Kawerimi, leaving Shikamaru wondering how many times Naruto would have to remember being shanked in the kidneys by his teammate, thanks to his bunshin. There was no doubt Kakashi was choosing Bunshin to take the really damaging attacks, and Naruto for almost anything else. What goddamn business did Kawerimi have being such a powerful offensive jutsu, anyway? Sure, he could see how Naruto had taken Mizuki down with his Bunshin, now. Well, that was a Chunin, and Kakashi was a Junin, so he kicked their asses soundly with nothing more than Taijutsu and a few E and D rank jutsu, just because he could. It only got worse once he started regularly using Henge to look like Naruto. Shortly after that, Shikamaru went down, and then, as though it were a formality, Kakashi grabbed the real Naruto by his heel and swung the boy overhead, slamming him to the ground between Shino and Shikamaru, before another white area jutsu that Shikamaru didn't even see wiped out all of the bunshin and left Naruto cross-eyed and mumbling. Once Shino regained consciousness and Naruto recovered to the point where he could swear again, Kakashi greeted them brightly. Good morning, my cute little students. Then he listed off his likes and interests, all of them being pretty much, I don't feel like telling you followed by their likes, and information that they'd never told any of the others. Shino had been a sleepwalker when he was younger, which was mildly surprising, but Shikamaru couldn't see the relevance, other than to point out that Kakashi had dug information up on them. Naruto had been caught peeping in area bathhouses to master his, sexy, jutsu not very long before graduating the academy, which was not very surprising at all, despite Naruto's outrage. Finally, he told the other two that Shikamaru was terrified of his mother. Well, he could admit he hadn't gone to great pains to hide that, then said the most horrific thing that Shikamaru had ever heard. I know I won't need to ask you three to find your killing intent, so now that we've properly met and finished warming up, let's see how you do in a real fight. He shuddered at the memory, grateful to be leaving the training ground behind him, hoping the sun would at least dry the mud, where had bastard sensei found mud, anyway. Shikamaru was positive there wasn't a river nearby, or they would have tried washing. But mud, the teacher had probably used a water jutsu they hadn't seen, just to throw them all in mud puddles. I think I might hate that man, the Naruto assisting Shino determined. Shikamaru painfully twisted back to look at the pair, causing the Naruto with him to grunt in pain, but not disperse. Shino's glasses were back in place, one lens scratched badly, and one supporting arm of the frame snapped off. Like, wise, Shino groaned, wincing as he hobbled along. Swiveling his head forward hurt just as much as turning it in the first place. Where to? Back to Kurenai Sensei's training ground, Naruto spit out, still propelling Shikamaru ahead. Did he? Knock you, unconscious. Shino wondered. Came close a few times, Naruto grumbled. But not today. Did you fight him the entire time? Shikamaru wondered. Yeah, Naruto agreed. You said to lose my temper. Shikamaru was confident he had spent more time unconscious than awake, but Naruto had been creating hundreds of bunshin, almost constantly. It was an ocean of orange, surrounding their party at all times, but never enough to down Kakashi. How much relative time was that? Did you, observe anything, about him? Shino rasped. He was holding back, Shino's assistant Bunshin groused. The Abarame boy loosed an annoyed grunt of his own, the three falling silent until they reached the clearing there, testing, had started in. And I'm pretty sure that I fought harder, not smarter, Naruto added. 
Shikamaru gladly collapsed onto the lawn, realizing only after the fact that steady streams of Kikaichu were climbing across his body. He thought about complaining, but then decided that if Shino's bugs weren't worried about his breathing, he should just let his teammates' partners do their job. Shino stood on his own when the bunchen with him dispersed, seeming to recover strength as his Kikaichu returned. Interesting. A few minutes passed, while Shikamaru actually began to feel somewhat recovered. After that, Shino gave a terse nod and led the way back one more time, all the way to where they had met Asuma. More Kikaichu began filtering back to the bug user, while Shikamaru and Naruto sat on the ground. Well, Shikamaru finally asked, Kurunai-sensei's package contain food and medical supplies, he determined. While my Kikaichu cannot relate specific conversations, it does not appear that any team's experience differed significantly from ours. I just realized, Naruto said slowly, if we had Kurunai-sensei first, then every other team got to test with her after, bad sensei. Damn, he was right. Shino nodded, grimacing. Speaking of them, we're late to meet with the others, Shikamaru warned. If anyone asks, why are we late? In one voice, tired and irritable, Shino and Naruto answered, Sensei is a bastard. Hanada waited anxiously at Senzo's, the evident meeting place for the rookie nine, now. At least, both Kiba's team and Sasuke's team had been sent there by their respective Sensei. And, what a nightmarish experience that was. Naruto hadn't been exaggerating, Kakashi was terrifying. Everyone so far had gone home and taken a shower before coming to Senzo's, seemingly a requirement, really, with how messy Kakashi's, testing, had gotten. Surely, Naruto's team wasn't still testing with the cruel sensei, were they? When she scanned across the others, all of them at least bruised or scuffed from Kakashi's handling, except for the surprisingly resilient Choji, she thought she saw signs of anxiety in them, too. Sure enough, the team she was waiting for staggered through the doorway, prompting Sakura to gasp quietly, and Ino to spit her tea back into her cup in surprise. Shino appeared to have a blackening circle even larger than his dark glasses forming around one eye, his lenses were scratched and hanging at a funny angle, his coat was torn in several places, and he walked with a slight but obvious limp. Shikamaru was worse, one cheek swollen, both eyes darkened, and one wrist wrapped in a heavy bandage. Between them, Naruto looked scuffed almost beyond recognition. His hair was almost uniformly gray, instead of the usual gold, and his clothes were reduced to little more than filthy tatters, as though someone had dragged him repeatedly across a field. He'd washed his face and hands, and the looser dust had been shaken out. That only served to make the trail of dried blood from his nose more obvious, though. She cringed at his other bruises, and Kiba yelped, I thought he was rough with us. We got special treatment on account of good behavior, Shikamaru replied, frowning as he probed at his jaw with one hand. Groaning, he collapsed into a seat and yes, the seat next to Hanada was still open, Naruto might take the spot between her and Shikamaru. Shino lurched towards the table, angling to sit down, and she fought back a wave of disappointment before the boy suddenly stood back up, and she realized he had actually almost collapsed. He struggled another step to the other seat in. Hanada felt the entire room warm by just under a thousand degrees as Naruto sat down next to her, groaning gingerly. I think he really liked us, he said smartly, forcing a grin he couldn't possibly feel. Well, did you pass? Sasuke demanded impatiently. Yes, Shino answered. It appears that for now, we are confirmed Genin. He paused. Unless any of you were failed by a sensei. Everyone quickly shook their heads, though, Hanada was astounded she survived Kakashi's ordeal, not much uplifted by his statement that he approved of her drive. Especially since he said she still needed a lot of work after that. Still, if they had endured worse. Then, we've made it, Choji said, obviously relieved. Only, now what? Now, Kakashi said, appearing suddenly behind the large boy in a puff of chakra residue and clapping one hand over Choji's shoulder, we decide how tomorrow goes. So Kiba, Choji, and Shino, my cute little students, you're with me. Sasuke or his girlfriends can tell you where to meet. Humming jauntily, Kakashi trotted out of the restaurant without waiting for a reply. The chopsticks in Sasuke's hand splintered. Sensei is a bastard, he spat. Asuma walked in only a moment later, nodding at Senzo before stopping at the table. Naruto, Sasuke, Hanada, you'll be training with me tomorrow, Hanada can show you where our team meets up, he announced, before turning away faster than they could reply. Naruto and Sasuke offered eerily similar grunts in response, eyeing one another warily. Hanada tried to restrain her smile to merely a pleased curve, not the manic, delighted grin she truly felt. She was going to be on a team with Naruto-kun tomorrow. It's by the small park in front of the Hokage Tower. She told Naruto happily, beneath the ginkgo tree. And logically, that puts me with, hating my life, Shikamaru sighed, rubbing his temples. What do you mean? Ino asked, frowning. I'm just, going to savor the quiet for the moment, he grumbled in response, flagging down a waitress and ordering something for himself, Naruto, and Shino. Shino-kun, I seriously would switch places with you if I could tomorrow. The Abarame boy adjusted his broken glasses slightly at that, giving a solemn nod. For a heartbeat, Naruto looked about to say something, 
but instead he shook his head and pulled a notebook from within his tattered outfit, miraculously unscathed, and began scanning across whatever was written there. Well, I'm done, Sasuke said, somewhat annoyed. He rose and left a handful of Ryo at his place, marching out the door. Where are we meeting up, Ino? Kiba asked, frowning. That bridge by the park about a block from my family's shop, she answered glumly. I think you and Naruto put a trap door in it once, a few years back. Oh, yeah, that was a good prank, Kiba mused. Except for the part about just cutting a hole in the bridge instead of putting in a trap door, Naruto countered. I told you installing new stuff would take too long. I'd complain more about you too, but Kakashi Sensei threw me into that river yesterday, Ino grumbled. Bastard Sensei, Naruto, Shikamaru, and Shino corrected in one voice. Ino blinked, then nodded, cheering slightly. Yeah, okay, Bastard Sensei. I like it, rolls off the tongue, Kiba agreed. Choji nodded reluctantly once the other boy elbowed him, nearly dislodging Akamaru. Sakura aside and hung her head. I'm going to pretend you guys made me start calling him that, if it comes up, she warned. If what comes up? Kurunai asked, stepping in through the doorway with one eyebrow raised. Er nothing, Sakura said quickly, blushing. Um, hi, Kurunai sensei. Hi, she returned, just as cheerfully. Well, Sakura-chan, Ino-chan, and Shikamaru-kun, you'll be with me tomorrow. Shikamaru knows where we'll meet, don't you? Yep, Shikamaru answered, staring intently at his bowl of noodles as it was served. Well, I hope we all have fun tomorrow. She smiled at all of the students and waved before walking away. I just realized, Ino started, once Kurunai was gone. I'm stuck on a team with the queen of foreheads again. Shut up, eyebrows, Sakura snarled, glowering. Welcome to a preview of my tomorrow, Shikamaru sighed. Naruto was surprised at how tired he was. He always recovered quickly, and he'd thought his energy was inexhaustible, but it somehow seemed that he'd managed to find some new, deeper level of tired to achieve. Not, sleepy exactly, as much as his head felt like it needed to rest. He wondered what that meant, but then, it got lost somewhere in the, very, very long battle with Kakashi. How long were they fighting? Not long after they'd finished their soup, and Ino, Choji, Kiba, and Sakura had left, Naruto turned to face Shikamaru at a question the genin leader had asked. Library Bunshin, he repeated. Yeah, what happened to them when Bastard Sensei used whatever it was to disperse your Bunshin all at once? Shikamaru pressed. That was a good question. It wasn't like he could feel his Bunshin, though, once they were out, that was pretty much it. He hadn't gotten memories back from them, at least. Well, there had been the pair that had gotten dispersed for other reasons, one was playing around trying to balance on a clothesline before falling to an alley. Another had tried practicing one henge too many and been jumped by Anbu for suspicious behavior. Hopefully it wouldn't be traced back to him, at least. If they behaved, he said, then the 18 that are left should disperse at exactly 5. Shikamaru quickly checked his pocket for a small timepiece. So, less than a minute. Okay, let's see what happens. He nodded, realizing that for some reason, Hanada was still with them in the restaurant. Hmm, he hadn't said a proper greeting to her yet, had he? He turned towards her say. An entire day spent in the library, yeah, only one Bunshin would probably tough it out, but if he ever wanted to learn anything from the library, he'd need to that one and pick something to read. Grabbing an arbitrary book without any real idea of what he should look for, the first title he picked up was, The Classic of Tea, by Senzo's restaurant was still around him, but an entire day spent in the library, probably, only one Bunshin would be able to stick the entire thing out. If he wanted anything useful from the library, he was going to have to stay, though. They had books about learning things in general, right? Since that was a weak point, he went to find some assistance, quickly getting a volume of unfamiliar kanji. Well, crap, okay, he'd spend the entire day with that in a dictionary. Shikamaru was still shaping some syllable of something, as he had a special purpose when he went into the library. He was the last bunch and sent in, and really, the only one who had specific instructions on what to read. It wasn't too hard to find a shelf with a relatively slim book titled, The History of the Twelve Guardian Ninja. That would at least let him know what the heck it meant that Asuma Sensei used to be one of. Shikamaru's gaze rose from his timepiece, the last sound of whatever he said just finishing. Just going to the library was boring, and reading about Go was boring. Still, it seemed to be one of those generic, smart people, things, so he'd buckle down and make himself finish the book he'd set aside yesterday. Maybe he could learn enough to provide a challenge too. For whatever reason, he was looking up at the ceiling, Shino's face peering down at him intently, glasses fallen off, revealing his eyes. That was new. Had Naruto seen those before? There had to be a reason he was. He really wasn't looking forward to spending the entire day reading. Partially because reading was hard, and partially because it was boring. He finally settled on what seemed like a good compromise, a young adult story with helpful furigana to teach him those annoying difficult kanji. That wasn't so bad, in the end. Shikamaru was looking down at him from above, too, though his face was turned away as he called for something. And then the rest of the memories returned. 
Hanada was horrified, things had seemed to be going so well. She was sitting next to Naruto, and for tomorrow, at least, would even get to be on a team with him, and then he suddenly got a strange look and tipped over in his seat, straight back onto the floor. She was stunned, frozen and unsure what to do when his two friends dropped to his side, trying to gauge his well-being before Shikamaru turned and called for medical assistance. Oh, Kami, was Naruto dying? She wasn't sure where Shino went, only that he'd made room for her to kneel at Naruto's side and take his hand, patting his wrist nervously. Was there anything she could do? She gathered her focus, activating her Kekai Genkei without a second thought, scanning Naruto's body and chakra for any sign of disturbance. She couldn't register any, or anything else she recognized as a sign of poor health. Her eyes lingered on the seal on his stomach, radiant with chakra, but no, that was fairly normal for Naruto. H. Hanada-chan, he croaked, seeming to come out of his fit, peering up at her in astonishment. Then his eyes shot wide and he sat up straight, suddenly sweeping her into a hug. Hanada-chan, he cried more happily. What? Shikamaru managed before Naruto spotted him. Shikamaru-kun, Hanada was so happy, she didn't even mind that Shikamaru was included in her first hug with Naruto. Air, Shikamaru finally wheezed. Ah, Naruto realized suddenly, letting go of both of them. Hanada reflexively checked Shikamaru's lung capacity and blood oxygen levels, since her Byakugan was still active. By her calculations he could have endured at least another 13 seconds of that hug. Oh, man was that a bad idea. Naruto chuckled, making her heart stop. All those bunchin at once. Her heart restarted okay, it wasn't her. She looked around, startled to realize that everyone around them was staring with something bordering shock. For some reason, Shino had knocked over someone else's table, smashed apart a chair, covered himself with someone else's food, and then decided to just lie there. Part of her mind registered that a perfect line ran from where she had been sitting, her current position, and Shino. Oh, oh, ah tea, this is my fault, so please let me pay for the damages. She blurted out, as soon as the aged proprietor came in from the kitchen, looking around in surprise. She hurriedly apologized again, handing over nearly half of her weekly allowance, why had Shino broken that furniture, anyway? Well, he probably just panicked when he was worried about Naruto, like she had. Still, she couldn't let him pay for the damages, she felt somehow responsible. Senzo didn't really seem to mind that much, but accepted the money, assuring them that Ninja of the Leaf were always welcome regardless. It wasn't until she was outside with the other three that she let herself take a shaky breath and ask, W, what was that? To her enhanced sight, nothing had changed. Naruto was the same as ever, still a radiant beacon of chakra. Beyond that, he looked dizzy, and she could see his heart rate was slightly accelerated. Naruto squirmed a bit, but then haltingly explained how Cage Bunshin worked, and that he'd sent some to the library. So, he concluded, 18 of them managed to stick out the whole 10 hours and then reported back at once, is all. Shikamaru blinked and did some quick math. Naruto, he said with a frown, glancing around the street, that's that's a full week of time and then some, reading. Yeah, he said slowly, frowning. I think the problem was it hitting me all at once, though, when I was on the floor it suddenly felt like I'd actually been gone that long without even, you know, seeing any of you guys. He chuckled weakly at that, scratching the back of his head in embarrassment before fumbling for a notebook and hurriedly writing down a sequence of book titles and page numbers. Yeah, aiming for 20 is probably way too many, I think I'll tone it down to 4 or 5, and make sure they don't disperse all at once. Hanada was momentarily speechless, finally releasing her by Akugan. Naruto, suddenly taking an interest in the library. A sudden inspiration hit her, and she offered, you, um, you know, I, if you're studying for something M, maybe I could help. Maybe, Naruto agreed, laughing uncertainly. Maybe take a break for a bit, Shikamaru mused, raising an eyebrow. Hell, you just spent a week studying. Relax, do whatever, but like you were told, don't overdo it. I feel really tired, but like it's all in my head, Naruto mused, frowning. Honestly, I think it felt longer when we fought bastard sensei. It may be wise to sleep, Shino noted. There will be time for more study later. Hanada felt her hopes dashed once again. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, Naruto agreed, nodding. You can come by tomorrow before I send my library bunchin out, Hanada-chan. Oh, oh, okay, she agreed hurriedly, feeling elated once more, so much excitement, being around Naruto. She thought her heart was about to burst. W. Where do you live? Well, follow me, I'll show you, he said, grinning. Come on. Feeling like she was floating, she nodded eagerly, wondering where he got the energy to run if he were so tired. Well, Shikamaru drawled dryly, watching Naruto lead Hanada as they trotted away, that was interesting. An observation, Shino remarked, frowning, looking down at his arm, where his coat had been torn. What's that? Shikamaru mused, thinking about Naruto's experiences. How long until he had enough chakra to make a cage bunshin? Hanada is capable of hitting harder than bastard sensei has elected to strike me so far, Shino said, raising his gaze. Shikamaru blinked, glancing around the street again. Really, 
he asked, despite the fact that he doubted Shino would lie to him. The other boy gave a solemn nod in response. Shikamaru tugged at one earring thoughtfully. She seems to really like Naruto-kun, too. Obviously. Not to him, though. We'll have to share a good laugh at his expense once he figures it out, Shikamaru noted. Agreed. Ha. He knew Shino had a sense of humor in there somewhere. Until then, I'm willing to bet that she could teach Naruto-kun a thing or two about taijutsu. A family style. Shino asked doubtfully. Oh, right. Damn. No wonder it seemed like such an obvious solution. Hmm. That won't really do, then. We are seeking a taijutsu instructor. Shino asked. Kind of a side project I've been considering, Shikamaru allowed with a shrug. Basically, just trying to figure out who Naruto can practice with when we're doing training on our clan jutsu. Shino nodded slowly at that. Perhaps merely giving firmer direction with his bunshin, he suggested. Yeah, that's probably a good start. Anko had spent most of her day watching Kakashi train his students. She'd really meant to follow Shikamaru around coverly, see what her cute little, chibikage, was up to. Kakashi had evidently either decided not to watch out for the cage bunshin she'd left watching his training grounds, or she had been that good at sneaking up on him. She was confident it was the former. That meant that she had to strain her chakra reserves to make an extra bunshin to watch over Shikamaru, and then run all the way around Konoha to Asuma's team to tell the bunshin they're not to move after all. Anko being Anko, that meant that she naturally was ambushed by her own bunshin, playfully, of course, since she couldn't fight back without wasting all that chakra. So she got to Kakashi's training ground in time to watch him fling two Kunoichi and the Uchiha air around. The genin wouldn't spot it, but Kakashi was playing safer than they thought, his own cage bunshin were throwing water jutsu beneath the young ninja before they hit hard packed earth. Mild pain and some humiliation, instead of just raw pain. Not what she was used to, but she supposed that even one of the genin being killed meant the project would be a failure, and the Hokage would be, displeased. To say the least. The practical upshot of all of her efforts was the fact that as far she knew, she was the only one among the teachers with a bunshin to catch the Chibikage's team's extra scouting work. Now that was impressive, not that there was anything for them to actually find. She thought Kakashi should be proud of that, those three weren't content just to try and see underneath the underneath, they were trying to tear the underneath's head off to peer down its throat. Despite what she had told the other teachers, she really wasn't sure what to make of the, the other students, though. On the other hand, if the Chibikage's personal team were dead set on trying to fix the teamwork flaws in the Rookie 9, well. She was shaken from those thoughts when she reached her apartment, frowning to realize the door was unlocked. A kanai impaled on her door pinned a note in place, Kakashi's handwriting, followed by a simplified, unreasonably happy version of his own face in lieu of a signature. The message was a simple, can I have my book back? Pursing her lips, she wrenched the kanai from her door and absentmindedly pocketed the note. Yeah, she supposed she did owe him the book back. She'd gotten a hell of a lot more fun out of it than she'd originally expected. All right, she said, swinging the door open. I finished reading it, so you can have it back. Now, what are you doing in my apartment? The legendary copy ninja was sitting on her sofa, flipping through a magazine with one hand, while the other held a carafe of sake. I don't have my lucky lovely Kunoichi summoning book, he asked, tilting his head to one side slightly, seemingly fixed on the magazine. Flattery will get you quite a bit, she replied, closing the door and settling onto the couch next to him before pulling the book from her coat. Kinda makes me wish I had my own place in the mountains. He nodded absently, neither looking or reaching for the book. Annoyed, she tossed it onto the table. You can't get sympathy from me if I have no idea what you're beating yourself up over, she warned. It doesn't really shine, but that doesn't make it less true, he mumbled in response. Not truly. That was different. She had the strangest feeling that whatever he had said, it was one of the most truthful things he'd ever said. Was Kakashi drunk, he was staring at a very bland advertisement for a new soft drink, and Anko had a very hard time imagining him caring about that. She leaned close to him to sniff his breath curiously, but crossed some invisible boundary that roused Kakashi from his distraction. His visible eye flicked to her, and then away. I was thinking of reading a bit, he said in response to her nearness. But I might be persuaded otherwise. Not betraying her alarm, she gave him a dubious stare. It was one thing to play cat and mouse with Kakashi, but this sudden change in demeanor from, tolerant indifference, to, submissive acceptance. Something felt wrong about it. He didn't smell enough of alcohol for her to believe he was really impaired, and he was a ninja, anyway. Like most, he probably had techniques to control how much liquor affected him, or at the very least, he could probably sober himself up in a few seconds. So, what was he doing? With a sudden flash of insight, she realized he had no one else to share his problems with. Guy wouldn't really understand, though he'd genuinely try to cheer Kakashi. Then again, even if he'd, as much as he seemed capable, reached out to her for help, she didn't know what to do any better than the manic, taijutsu-obsessed Junin. She didn't really feel like playing guessing games, so instead said, I'm going to take a shower. You know where my bed is. She paused at the entrance to the hallway, looking over her shoulder. I can't really say I know what's going on with you. 
the best I can offer is to make you forget for a few minutes. So, you're welcome to join me. When morning came around, Hanada found herself awake early. Since she found herself with so much energy, she decided to just set out ahead of schedule. Of course, Naruto hadn't really thought to give her a specific time when she should come by his place. Then again, she didn't want to come over too early. She settled on what seemed to be a compromise. If she went over before he was ready, well, she could just offer to do something to make it up for him. That thought in mind, she jogged quickly to the market district by Naruto's apartment, scanning the stalls that were just opening and quickly rounding up what she thought she would need. After that another jog through the lifting mists, and she skidded to a halt at the stairs leading up to his apartment, grocery bags in hand. She reached his door and paused. If she was too early, she wouldn't want to accidentally wake him up when he needed his rest. He'd just had a difficult practice with the terrifying Kakashi yesterday, after all. Really, in the interest of being polite, she took out lockpick set she kept tucked behind the leaf symbol of her Hitai 8, though, she wore hers as a collar. With her Kekai Genkei active, the security on Naruto's apartment door was trivial. Very carefully, she eased the door open, one ear towards the apartment to listen. She could distantly make out the sounds of very light snoring, and allowed a satisfied smile to cross her face. Good, she wasn't going to risk being a bad guest. After letting herself in and looking around, she studied the floor plan. The front room was divided into a kitchenette and a living area, which was almost completely devoid of furniture. A few wall hangings provided some decoration, the leaf of Konoha, the spiral symbol that she didn't recognize that Naruto wore on his arm, and a surprisingly elegant sample of calligraphy reading, happiness, signed by the Hokage. Nodding to herself, and reminding herself that she was a ninja, she stealthily approached the kitchen. After busying herself with some chores that Naruto had most likely been intending to do shortly himself anyway, she judged it clean enough to actually prepare food. Now, time to get to work. She had timed it so that between everything else she was doing to keep herself occupied, the meal would be ready at the same time as Naruto's alarm clock was set to go off. Of course, using her Kekai Genkei to determine the time the alarm was supposed to go had revealed quite a bit about Naruto's room, still, she reminded herself, it was okay. She wasn't actually going into his room, or anything. Just looking, to see when the alarm clock was going off. And absolutely not peeking around at other things along the way. What cute pajamas. She wrenched her attention back to the stove, forcing those thoughts away. After she dismissed her Bayakugan, the extra blood seemed to flow straight out of her enhanced nerves and into her cheeks, and then just settled there. Just under a minute before the alarm should have gone off, she heard a mumble from Naruto's room. It was close enough, she turned off the stove and crept to the door to listen. He was whimpering a half-formed protest, and she just barely made out the name of Aruka. She felt her heart constrict, and tears well in her eyes. Poor Naruto, suffering a nightmare. She wished she could help, but it wouldn't be proper to go into his room, she was an heiress to her clan. It was improper to the extreme, to say nothing of the fact that he might not appreciate her presence there. And, anyway, the alarm would go off in a moment and rouse him. Except, it couldn't, because she shut it off and sat carefully on the side of his bed, cautiously touching his shoulder and whispering his name as she gently tried to rouse him. Dot nnn ha. He started, eyes shooting wide open, and then closing, as he heaved a deep breath, his hand reflexively grabbing hers. Ong. Um, his other arm rose and flopped across his eyes, his face twisting into a grimace. For a heartbeat, he was still. Then he mumbled, Huza, dot huh. Uncovering his eyes, he blinked up at her quizzically, still holding her hand. Hanada chan, he asked in bemusement. Why? Dot yes, she stammered uncertainly. Oh, dear, he wasn't liable to think this was a dream, was he? How embarrassing that would be, if he tried to take advantage of her. You're in my room. Ah, she started. Why? Dot you were having a nightmare, I thought, and. Well, what was a good explanation for this? As if in answer, the oven timer dinged, and she haltingly offered, I w. Dot was making you, breakfast. He blinked again, releasing her hand, then sat up and dragged a hand through his hair, dislodging the cute sleeping cap. Oh, oh dear, she hadn't gone too far, had she? That's awesome, he exclaimed suddenly, grinning. Thanks, Hanada-chan, you're amazing. Naruto felt bad for Hanada. She'd gone out of her way to come over and surprise him, and evidently she'd gotten up so early she'd just immediately fallen asleep after waking him up to eat. Poor girl, he'd always thought she was kind of quiet and weird, but then she'd offered suddenly to help him study. After getting up, Naruto moved Hanada's prone form closer to the center of the bed, so she wouldn't fall off. He stepped into the living room, squinting at the floor, then at the kitchen table, then the kitchen itself. He couldn't even make cup ramen without somehow generating dirty dishes and getting the kitchen messy. How the hell had Hanada managed to make all that food without making any mess? Staring at it didn't make it go away, so it wasn't an illusion. He was a bit hungry, but it felt rude to start without her. He decided to let her nap while he took a shower. In his remarkably clean bathroom. When did that happen? 
After he dressed in clean clothes he didn't remember washing, he stepped out of the bathroom, not terribly surprised to see Hanada already up again, blushing profusely as she pulled out the chairs at the kitchen table. Did you clean my entire house? He wondered. For some reason, she looked guilty when she nodded. That's really cool, he told her, grinning. I must have been out of it, or else you've got awesome ninja skills. Why? Dot you must have been very tired, she said almost instantly in response. Nah, he said, once she served him a plate. If you can do that, and cook this good, you're pretty awesome. The girl looked simultaneously elated, and as though she were trying to find some way to refute the claim. For a moment, he thought she was going to insist, somehow, that it wasn't good enough, but she finally squeaked out, T, thank you, Naruto-kun. Yeah, he thought he was starting to understand this girl. She seemed genuinely nice, like she wanted to help people. He supposed she was just really shy. Well, he didn't really know what to do about that, but he could try being her friend. Heck, they were going to be teammates anyway. Say, Hanada, he began, once he'd finished eating, while she was still working on her own meal. Come to think of it, I guess it's a bit strange, having you over like this. She blinked, looking confused and strangely paler than usual. Err, but then, that's my fault, he added quickly. Yeah, uh, we should be friends, shouldn't we? Yes, she shouted without hesitation, eyes even wider. Err um, yes, she said, somewhat more calmly, trembling for some reason as she smiled. F, friends, s, so that this is not strange, r, right. Hey, I'll let you come over to make breakfast for me any time. He assured her, he would, too, the strange magic that transformed, things from the market into genuinely edible food was just alien to him. Cup ramen was the only thing he felt competent to prepare, and that usually ended up messy anyway. Heck, shaking me out of that nightmare, I should say thanks for that, too. She looked ecstatic, and he felt pleased with himself, glad he'd finally figured something out on his own. There, Hanada had wanted to be friends with him, and now they were. One step closer to a better team, and then being free of Kakashi's reign of terror. In fact, with Hanada around, he was sure he'd be able to keep from snapping at Sasuke. That was pretty cool, too. It was already shaping up to be a pretty good day. So, tell me, Hanada-chan, how do you get good at studying, anyway? I hum, Hanada responded, blinking several times, her cheeks strangely pink. Maybe her breakfast was too warm. Oh, why? Dot yes, right, um, t, to start with, what are you studying? Come to think of it, that was actually a pretty good question. I don't know, but someday I want to be Hokage, so anything that will help me with that. With reluctance and some resignation, Shikamaru plodded towards his inevitable doom. The coddling, soft-hearted teacher and the two most delicate kunoichi in, not just the rookie nine, the entire genin class. He was going to be surrounded in misery. It was only when he arrived at the meeting place, intentionally one minute late, that the true sadistic genius of the plan began to sink in. Because, as he was going to suffer, so were Shino and Naruto. By Kakashi or Uchiha, their collective sensei had decided to ensure that the road to becoming a ninja was fraught with pain. Kurenai and the girls turned to look at him as he strolled up to the group. Sorry I'm late, he drawled. That's fine, their teacher assured him, giving a friendly smile. One minute for training isn't too bad. Ino and Sakura looked less than convinced, but said nothing about it, turning their attention to the teacher. So, what are we doing today? Ino wondered, scratching her head. Today we will be discussing conduct, she said. Of course, Shikamaru realized sourly. No chance of learning something genuinely useful. That'll help the next time B. Kakashi decides to throw us around, Ino remarked. That's Kakashi-sensei, Kurenai corrected. Er, how does this help us become better ninja? Sakura wondered. Because there are certain codes of behavior we adhere to, and before you advance as ninja, you must understand how to behave around your superiors, she clarified. Then she paused, holding her hands together thoughtfully, before she smiled again. Well, you can do more than just listen to me lecture you. For practice, let's see how long you can maintain the leaf concentration exercise while we talk. Oh, hell, Shikamaru had spent long hours, probably days, in the academy with Naruto, Kiba, and Choji doing that stupid exercise. If Aruka hadn't. Ooh, he had to give Kurenai points for subtlety. He'd been expecting the attack against his spirit to come from an entirely different direction. Huh, maybe he could learn something from her, after all. Sure, he said, when Sakura and Ino looked dismayed. Kurenai beamed a smile at him, then handed over a leaf. He pressed it against his forehead without hesitation and sank to sit in a meditative posture, tilting his head slightly back. Just like old times, Sakura teased him, as she and Ino took their leaves and sat nearby. He doesn't have a chance of beating you, but with so much forehead, maybe you should have two leaves, Ino heckled. Bite me, eyebrows, the pink-haired girl retorted in a growl. Oh, yeah, Shikamaru muttered, focusing his chakra on the leaf. You guys are doing great at conduct, say, do you remember who taught us this exercise? 
Both girls shot him surprised looks before falling completely silent, the reminder diffusing their argument before it could properly heat up. Much better, Kuranai said, when none of the students spoke for a full minute. Now, there will be a test on this lecture once we're finished, but keep those leaves in place. Asuma surveyed his charges, standing around him in a semicircle, all of them on time. Hanada and Naruto had arrived together, the girl blushing and stammering, unreasonably cheerful for someone who had endured Kakashi's training only a day ago. He nodded at that thoughtfully, mentally confirming who Hanada's, certain person, was. Kuranai's observation on that count had been spot on, unsurprisingly. Sasuke had arrived very shortly after, looking completely indifferent to his teammates and simply waiting expectantly for Asuma to speak. Naruto and Hanada said nothing once the other boy came into visual range. Even though it was time for the lesson to begin, he remained quiet. He had a pack of cigarettes, but given time, like the present, he preferred to roll his own. While his students watched him expectantly, he very slowly went through the process, covertly studying their reactions. Sasuke hid his impatience, waiting. Naruto quickly got bored of watching him and looked around aimlessly, obviously fighting an urge to fidget. Hanada altered between trying to steal glances at Naruto and watching Asuma uncertainly. Eventually, he finished rolling the brand and brought it to his lips, hiding it from their sight as he used some simple chakra shaping to create a spark in the tip. Come to think of it, with a Sharingan and a Byakugan among his students, he probably only really hid it from Naruto. No matter, he waited until his cigarette was finished and Naruto appeared to finally be on the verge of speaking before addressing them. Today, he intoned solemnly, we shall learn to breathe. Sasuke was unimpressed, Hanada seemed accepting, Naruto looked annoyed. Follow, he ordered, turning and leading the trio out of the park where they met up, and to a calmer place. Not quite a park, just a secluded, undeveloped corner of Konoha, along the bank of the river. At other times of the year, it would be more scenic, but year-round, it was quiet. Sit, he commanded, his students did as instructed. A fallen tree branch provided a good stick, once he snapped off a few unneeded twigs. First, to breathe, you must maintain posture. He walked around them in slow circles, prodding Naruto first in the upper arm. Sit up straighter, he instructed. Relax your shoulders. Sasuke watched intently, adjusting his own sitting posture to match Naruto's, and Hanada did the same. What does sitting have to do with breathing? Naruto grumbled, adjusting himself as per Asuma's demands. Everything, he answered, carefully explaining nothing before he went to Hanada. Too much tension, he informed her. Relax your elbows and hands. By the time he got to Sasuke, the boy's posture was almost right. Chin lower, he advised. Relax your neck. Now, he instructed, close your eyes, and let your breath be the breath of the world around you. Before Naruto could ask, he explained, the measure of your breath should be constant. Focus on that more than anything else, drive all distractions from your mind and think only of your breathing. Regular breaths, in for the count of three, out for the count of four. The entirety of your awareness should be on your breathing and nothing else. Then what? Naruto protested. Then, stop thinking about that, too. It only took about ten minutes for Naruto to verbalize the frustration he could sense in all three of them. Why is it so hard not to think? He grumbled, seeming to be completely stymied by the concept. I would have thought you would have a gift for that, Sasuke shot back, unable to resist. Naruto made an annoyed sound in response, but didn't otherwise rise to the bait. Hanada gave Naruto a sympathetic look before eyeing Sasuke dubiously, which he ignored. Asuma rolled another cigarette and watched his charges obediently try to meditate. Hanada was keeping her movement minimal, but was still betraying tiny involuntary twitches, and stealing constant peeks at Naruto. Sasuke's eyes were closed, but for all of his taunting, he was focusing almost exclusively on Naruto. Likewise, the orange-clad boy had no real chance of achieving any kind of inner peace while he kept trying to pay attention to Sasuke without opening his eyes or being obvious about it. He was confident that they'd spend the entire day trying, and failing, to meditate. That was fine, though. They needed to understand how far they had to go before they could earnestly begin that journey, and as far as he could determine, these three were the ones who would need help focusing the most. Time to test them. While seeking peace, they found everything that prevented them from achieving it. Hanada, what is on your mind? Asuma asked suddenly, startling all three of his students into opening their eyes. Ah, um my father, she blurted out, seeming dismayed at herself for speaking. And what is he doing? Asuma asked. T, telling me I'm an unworthy heir, she mumbled, bowing her head and looking away. Naruto gave her a confounded look fit to rival his earlier ones. Asuma nodded knowingly and sent them back into meditation without further explanation. When he judged the interval of time was enough for them to at least become distracted, he targeted Naruto next. Naruto, what is on your mind? He prompted. Mizuki, Naruto answered with a grimace, shaking his head. Unsurprising. Though he suspected the answer anyway, Asuma pressed, and what is he doing? H, he's dying, begging me to stop stabbing him, Naruto answered, his voice shaking. Hanada bit back a sympathetic gasp, completely abandoning all pretenses of meditation. G, 
guess that must have been one of the middle bunchin to get there. Not the last few hundred, though, he couldn't talk so much by then. A flash of irritation crossed Naruto's face and he bowed his head, staring at the ground past his knees. Asuma gave the same knowing nod, hiding an internal wince. Her and I would be best to field that one, probably. More worrisome was the undisguised fascination Sasuke showed at the few words Naruto had allowed. There was no doubt in anyone's mind what was coming next, so Asuma waited until it would have been reasonable to stop for lunch before deciding that Sasuke had become as settled as he would for this exercise. He prompted Sasuke, just as the others. His response was a clipped, my family. And what are they doing? Nothing, he answered. They're dead. Another total lack of surprise, there, the fate of his clan was known to everyone. Asuma gave the same knowing nod in response. Rise, he commanded the students. They watched him warily as they stood, stretching out stiff joints and looking around for some clue of what would happen next. He turned on one heel and led them up the bank to the street, and across the road to his favorite barbecue restaurant. He especially liked the outdoor seating, so he could watch his students while smoking, without bothering anyone else too much. Are we going to be doing a lot of this as ninja? Naruto asked somewhat plaintively. Asuma waved a hand as a waitress approached, indicating his regular order for himself and students. Not that he'd actually had a meal with this particular group of students, yet. What is a ninja, Naruto? He asked patiently. We're ninja, he answered, confused. I mean, is this about the will of fire and serving Konoha? The codes and stuff we have to always follow. Before any of those things, a ninja is a person, Naruto. The boy sighed at that, seeming to dismiss the answer as nonsense, instead focusing on the table before him as the waitress returned, setting a dish of teriyaki beef and stir-fried vegetables before each of them. Asuma took one last draw from his current cigarette, preparing to launch into a lengthy lecture. You see, Naruto, he said, suddenly acting as a companionable sensei, instead of behaving as an elder monk to his initiate, meditation is about understanding. Eventually, you'll be able to understand the world around you in more clear and practical terms. To understand being a ninja better, you must understand yourself better. You are a ninja, before that, what are you? A, person, he asked warily, glancing at Hinata to see if she had a suggestion. Sasuke began eating silently, though he at least looked contemplative. That is one answer, Asuma allowed. To progress, you must learn to stop thinking. There are two aspects of meditation, and they will strengthen your mind if you can master them both. What are they? Sasuke asked immediately. Serenity or tranquility, the ability to maintain composure. Insight or focus, the ability to attain wisdom with internal clarity. B. Dot but what does? Hanada began before cutting off at being the target of three gazes. Um. H. Dot how do those questions you asked us fit into this? Those are the thoughts that occupy your mind and prevent you from achieving clarity, Asuma explained. Things that you must overcome to improve your ability to meditate, and to be better ninja. Sasuke grunted at that, pushing his empty plate away. Naruto gave a morose sigh and produced his notebook, asking, are there any good books about meditation you can suggest? Sasuke gave Naruto a very strange look at that, and for whatever reason, Hinata seemed slightly cheered. Asuma kept his expression neutral, answering, a great many. Naruto frowned at that, well, which are the best ones? He pressed, if I have to figure out this inner peace stuff to be a better ninja, what's the fastest way to do that? Smiling softly, Asuma shook his head. To master the no-mind state, you must learn to ponder questions which cannot be answered. Huh, consider this, Naruto, if a tree falls in the woods, and no one can hear it, does it make a noise? Yeah, he answered, nodding. I'm pretty sure it does. Why? Naruto opened his mouth to answer, then thought better of it. After a long minute of thought he complained, I don't know, it makes a noise when people can hear it fall, so why wouldn't it just because no one is around? Ah, you have answered the question, Asuma noted. That didn't seem very unanswerable, Sasuke mumbled. Sasuke, a wheel is a hoop, yet it can bear all the weight of an axle no matter how it turns. Where is the strength in the wheel? The Uchiha air blinked, struggling to process the question, looking for an answer. Hanada looked between the two of them, then down to her untouched food. Naruto sighed and began to eat, shaking his head. And Hanada, an empty vessel is made of simple clay. Where is the value in it? Yeah, Naruto got an easier question, Sasuke grumbled. Is that so? Asuma asked, leaning closer to the Uchiha air with an amused smirk. What's your answer, then? The shape, he guessed, his expression doubtful. I see, and Hanada. T. Dot the value of the vessel is the, empty space within it. Hanada posed haltingly, looking fearful of his response. Asuma was nothing short of amazed, she'd actually figured it out. He doubted she'd really achieved a no-mind state to come that far, but that didn't matter. She'd puzzled through it anyway, even while appearing distracted by Naruto and Sasuke. Naruto, your answer is incorrect, Asuma noted. It doesn't make a sound. Naruto asked, surprised. Also wrong, Sasuke released an irritated snort, crossing his arms over his chest and looking away. There's no correct answer, then, he judged. 
and for the third time, wrong, Asuma declared, shaking his head. There are correct answers, like Hinata's. Then what's the right answer? Naruto demanded, setting down his chopsticks and pushing his clean plate away. For a ninja, the answer is, it does not matter. The tree has fallen. Naruto made a sound of disgusted despair, dramatically dropping his head to the table. Meditation sucks, he whined. Good, you are losing your illusions and preparing to approach enlightenment. Fine, Sasuke said crisply. If the strength of a wheel isn't the shape, what is it? The wheel is a community, Sasuke. It is a circle, with nothing in the center, it falls apart. Sasuke's eyes narrowed, but he refused to rise to the bait and ask the obvious question. The strength comes from the spokes, small supports that cross the void and connect opposing sides of the same circle, Asuma explained. However, even in the case of Hanada, who answered correctly, comes the issue of understanding. Hanada, what is the significance of the vessel and its worth? How does it pertain to you? I, I'm worthless, she asked. Asuma bit back a sigh. How the hell had Hanada gotten through the academy with such shaky confidence? Sasuke rolled his eyes, but Naruto sat up, shaking his head and looking at Hanada in confusion. How can you think that? He asked. You were the only one who figured out their question. That, he bit something back and said, I couldn't figure mine out, so if you're worthless, doesn't that make me even less? Impressive, Naruto, Asuma said. You are learning to destroy the selfish ego and relinquish worldly bonds. Huh, a joke, he assured the boy, rolling yet another cigarette. This one he tucked behind his ear for later, instead of lighting. No, Hanada, you are the vessel, and your worth is the potential you have to retain knowledge. All men and women are made from the same worthless clay, our value comes from the experiences we become filled with. Oh, she exclaimed a slight smile coming to her lips. So, we're done and we can move on to the next part of our training, right? Naruto asked, almost desperately. Correct, he agreed. Next, we shall return to the riverbank and meditate in utter silence. Your question is this, what is the sound of one hand clapping? The orange-clad boy groaned, adjusting his hitai with resignation after Hanada pushed her plate away, finished. Follow, Asuma instructed after rising, slipping back to the role of senior monk tending his acolytes. The assembled rookie nine collected at Senzo's once more. Shino, Choji, and Kiba looked significantly worse for wear, the rotund boy seeming to have taken the least actual damage. Naruto winced in sympathy for Shino, how many of those coats was Kakashi going to ruin? Bad enough that Naruto had to use his backup orange jacket. Well, Sasuke grumbled in a frustrated tone, did anyone else have fun? Training was mind-numbing, Shikamaru answered without hesitation, staring bleakly forward. How bad could it be? Kiba wondered. Seriously, we were with Bastard Sensei. Try and come up with something worse than that. Remember the leaf concentration exercise? The shadow user asked irritably. Ah, crap, Kiba sighed. Well, what about Asuma Sensei, then? Was he at least reasonable? Hey, Kiba, try to not think, Naruto called. Huh, what, acting like you? He asked, smirking. Rolling his eyes, Naruto waved the insult away, warning, Sasuke already did that gag, and better than you. Damn, nothing is going my way today. Kiba whined. Yeah, yeah, but seriously. Spend a minute and try to think of nothing at all, Naruto said, unable to keep the frustration from his voice. Oh, yeah, Ino remarked, nodding knowingly. Learning to blank you mind so that your conscious thoughts are suppressed is pretty hard at first. Yeah, it's totally wait, you know how to do that. Naruto wondered, staring at the blonde in amazement. Figures that blondie knows how to empty her head on command, Sakura jibed. That's nothing, Kiba retorted, before Ino could reply. I'll do it, watch. Kiba closed his eyes and took a deep breath, Akamaru looking down at him with a remarkably doubtful expression. Sasuke didn't even wait a full minute to ask, so, what are you thinking about, Kiba? Akamaru, he answered, opening his eyes. Wow, that actually is really hard. It's easy once you get the trick of it, Ino assured them, smirking. Maybe I'll help you guys out, but not when Sakura's around. Since she's so smart, she can figure it out herself. Well, forgive me for not having a clan to give me those kinds of advantages. Sakura snarled. Who knows? Ino asked with feigned innocence. Maybe you have an undiscovered Kekai Genke, or will make some sort of previously unheard of forehead-based jutsu. Oh, that's it, Sakura yelled, jumping to her feet. Shikamaru squinted up at the lights in the restaurant, then suddenly threw both arms out, almost hitting Ino in the chest and Sakura in the hip, announcing, Kujmain no jutsu, successful. Shikamaru, Sakura growled, held still by the other boy, once I get out of this, I will kill you. Yeah, stop holding me back. Ino snapped, both girls trembling, unable to move. Or maybe you two can stop making a scene in a public restaurant. He replied in irritation, pardon me if I seem to recall an entire day of training about proper behavior while you two were busy sniping at one another. Important update. Girls, the teachers almost certainly know you two hate each other. You're not going to be on different teams until you get over it. As your unwillingly elected leader, 
I'm afraid it's my responsibility to have to actually do stuff if you get us into trouble. Don't make me do work. Sakura and Ino both grumbled at that. Naruto felt more than a little bad for Sakura, but then, he got stuck on a team with Sasuke. Aside from which, Shikamaru was a cool teammate. He was pretty sure that if Ino and Sakura managed to stop fighting for a while, they'd probably realize that, too. Can it be assumed that you two will behave properly and not give our teacher cause to question our teamwork? Shino asked, rising from his chair. Sakura growled wordlessly, while Ino grimaced and grudgingly aloud, fine. Alternately, I will drain your chakra with my kikaichu. Shino paused, and even scuffed, Naruto was impressed with how intimidating he looked, tilting his head slightly and causing the dark lenses of his glasses to flash like angry mirrors. Training with bastard sensei has caused them to become quite hungry. Okay, Sakura cried, fine, but she started it. That sounded like argument, Shikamaru noted. Okay, okay, Sakura mumbled petulantly. Just let me go, already. Shikamaru grunted, and didn't seem to do anything, but the girls were able to move again, Ino shifting her shoulders uncomfortably, and Sakura settling into her seat. So, Kakashi asked brightly, appearing in a puff of smoke once more. Who's this, bastard sensei? He sounds like a real motivator. Naruto bit his tongue, he makes me want to do things, all right, Kiba grumbled. Ah, my cute little student misses me, he exclaimed. Kiba sniffed imperiously, but Kakashi ignored him, reaching out to pat a surprisingly eager Akamaru. Thank you, Akamaru, but I'm afraid tomorrow, you'll have to be with another teacher. Akamaru allowed a curious, slightly confused whimper in response. Hanada, Kakashi exclaimed brightly, almost causing the shy girl to spill her teacup. Tomorrow, your team will meet with me for training. Won't that be fun? You, understood, she replied, blinking. B. Dot but, my, team. Yep, see you tomorrow, my cute students. He vanished the same way he arrived. I guess this gets us a suma tomorrow, Shikamaru sighed. I probably shouldn't complain, one more day to avoid bastard sensei. Indeed, Shino said, tiredly sinking back to his seat. Shortly after that, Kurenai showed up to announce that Shino, Kiba, and Choji would be going with her, confirming Shikamaru's guess. I wonder when they'll mix up the teams again, Choji mused. You probably know, right Shikamaru? I can guess, Shikamaru allowed. And my guess would be that every three days, one full rotation through our sensei, and then they'll mix us up again. He paused. Unless Ino and Sakura keep fighting, in which case, they'll probably still be stuck together. The girls groused at that, while Hanada shook her head doubtfully. Thanks for watching my video. If you want the next part of this video then comment down below. Leave a like to the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates on my next video.